drop it! Welcome back to Flet's Movies and Pop Culture 13, where we discuss all movies. I'm your host, Kyle Curtis Flet. Today, I'm here to discuss the horror films that made me love horror. The horror genre is definitely my number one genre. I love other genres, but the horror genre, you know, it changed my life when I first watched my very first horror film. I love the sub subgenres that came with it. I love each of them, and I love that you can. Sh- there's so many ways you can shoot horror, and I love these films. And the films I'm going to talk about today, I love very, very much. And and horror in genre, I love very much. So back, so 1997, that it started all, I got to see my very first horror film was the original Actresses. I think it's phenomenal, credible film. It pushed the boundaries. It had no restrictions, no holes barred. I love what Freakman did to it. I love the performances of Linda Blair, Ellen Bernstein, and Jason Miller. And I love the fact it's not just about Reagan and her mother, Chris story arc i love the story arc of father Karras's jason miller's character's father Karras's character what he goes through he was an ex-boxer he's a priest now and then of course he's going through stuff with his mother his mother dies on spectrum we all know why what happened to her and i think that scene where she comes up the subway and he's waving it's very very creepy and very scary and it's just a well built feels you chilling scene and of course you know at first he's reckoning it that he's to help Reagan, but later on he agrees to finally do the exorcism, but he doesn't do it along with Max Vanshell's character, and I think Father Marin and Edge phenomenal scene, especially I think one of the best dialogue moments in this in the movie is when Father Karras goes into the bedroom by himself and he talks to the the, the devil, the demon that possessed Reagan, and it's just a great dialogue scene and very uneven, and it's just very bone chilling. And then at the end, when he finally he's had enough because the you know the demons mocking him with the you're not my father, and then and and of course he goes head to head with him, and then of course what's so cool he still has the power to control himself and he still flies like oh it flies out the window, and of course he dies to his death, and what's so cool he's still communicating with his hand at the end, and it's so sad. But I love the you know it's crazy amazing what Linda Blair went through, and especially the I think that the scenes that no one's seen before at that point, you know the masturbation with the crucifix you know and, the, and then um the head spin and then the if, if you watched in the extended cut the spider walk and it, it just i love how how the story it's great storytelling at its best and then i can preach what the actresses did to me because it made me love supernatural films not all supernatural films since then have done done it ha- has been good because because i think actresses at rose is amazing because it's not just about you know her story, you know, there's the, you know, the courtroom stuff. And Jeffrey and Carpenter is just phenomenal with that. But, you know, that's what I just said, set the tone because it made me love the films like The Conjuring because, you know, what I love James Wan, how he shoots films. He does jump scares properly and the way he tells film and the way he shoots it, he gets it. And The Conjuring, I think The Conjuring is definitely James Wan's masterpiece. And, just, and so... And I think the scene, I think the scene, the scene that's so geniusly in the Conjuring is when the wardrobe scene, you don't see nothing. And then finally you get to see the demon on top. It just, it just scares you. And I think that scene is this very, very, very geniusly. And I can preach what the actresses did to did for me. And so my next film I'm going to talk about is my second horror film. And it made me love the slasher genre. Of course, I love John Car- John's work was the original Halloween, because you know that POV shot. You, you, of course, you get the opening with the phenomenal, iconic score, and then you get the POV shot with the young Michael walking towards the house. He's his sister with a boyfriend getting it on, and and of course he kills her, Michael. And then you see that he's watching him with the hand. I love that camera work, and then it's a like, Michael, and they take the head off, and and what did you? I could imagine what people thought back then. It was a six-year-old kid 
doing that. That was shocking. Of course, it you know it created iconic characters like Donald Pleasant as Dr. Loomis, um, Laurie Strode, um, Jamie because this was Jamie Lee Curtis's very first film. And of course, the iconic villain Michael Myers, because you never know why he was stalking Laurie and her friends. I think it's so genius. I love the slow burn that gets to it. You know, the kills are still very brutal, and then there's not much blood and gore, which nothing wrong with that. I still think the kills are still pretty damn good. Um, it's just very creepy in the way Myers, you know, way, you know, Lori, I think it's a genius scene because Lori sees Myers in the backyard and she just doesn't look away and he's like, is she imagining this or is he here? He just disappeared right in front of her eyes. And, and, it, and I love, you know, I love the, the mask because it was just from a 1975 Kirk mask and Don Post. So what a phenomenal, phenomenal movie that was. Halloween is maybe love the slasher genre. It's just, and then it's very very amazing still my next film you know the shining stanley kubrick's film you know because you know i you know and getting getting casting jack nielsen it was just perfect you know and the and the hotel is that its own character by itself that hotel is just very creepy in its own character on its own and, you know, the scenes that get me when I was a kid was, you know, when Danny's riding his bike and he sees the twins and never. And, of course, you know, the blood coming out of the elevator and, they know, and know, you know, Jack says, oh, that's not going to happen to us. And then one, the, the more, the more they're there and the more they're isolated, the more he just gets, the evil takes over and they get angry. And, his, and the dialogue he sa says that Sally Duvall is just bone chilling. And you know, and it's very, very bone chilling, and um, because that is, and of course he goes crazy. Here's Johnny, and he just comes with the axe, and of course he gets frozen outside, and in the in the, in the famous maze scene, it's just just phenomenal. And that movie, I know that The Shining is definitely a incredible film. I not not I know not everyone likes it, which is fine, but The Shining definitely is one of my favorite Stephen King adaptions. I know Stephen doesn't, I know Stephen King don't like it, but I do. So next film we're going to talk about is the West Craven's Nightmare on Elm Street. What a film that was. Nightmare on Elm Street is definitely one of West Craven's masterpieces as well. You know, he created, of course we had Michael and Jason at the point, but we never had the killer in, you know, in makeup that, you know, that talked and was very creepy and said all those lines. And, and they created one of the best, uh, that final girls of all time and heather lane cast nancy and what's so cool about it you know it you know and there's one thing that i but you know dream and you, you're afraid that you're afraid that the fall asleep and you die in your dreams and even takes stuff out of your dreams and i think tina's kill is not just one of the best of the friends it's one of the best in horror and cinema history ever because you know and that's how we get introduced to the first i the first two first iconic character character and he comes down the street with his hands and he comes in front of her and says, hey tina look at this and then laughs about it and of course you know tina's flying the room hits rod ted because it, we all know that's a dummy but you can imagine how hard that would hurt if that actually happened and it's such an iconic scene and you know and uh, i love how the fact how she's saying traps here was of the core version of home alone at that point but and then john saxon it's just phenomenal dialogue and i know the ending is kind of off, but I know West Craven didn't want to do that ending, but it's just, I still enjoy it. I still love Nightmare on Elm Street, and I love it very, very much. And, and of course, too, and then, of course, right after that, that's when I got introduced to Alfred. You know, other films that made me love the genres, because it was Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, Birds, Vertigo, you know, and the way, you know, and I always told Young, I always told other filmmakers, especially young, like you don't need to go to film school. Just go watch Alfred Hitchcock's films, not just for the suspense, but just the way how he did every genre right and how he did his film. That's the way he shot film. It's the it's right there. You can just go study his films, and his film is just phenomenal. And especially you know with Psycho, you know he makes us spend forty minutes with Janet Leigh's character, he made love, and then he kills her off the iconic shower scene. And of course, you get nowhere in base. You know, it's just phenomenal character and what a what amazing film that was. And Birds, you know, he was able to take us a nature 
animal like the bird and make him very, very creepy. And you know, Vertigo, I think, is definitely one of James Stewart's best. Um, and his film has made me love horror. And of course, um, of course, I love the Universal Monsters, of course. You know, Universal Monsters, what, the Frankenstein, the Wolfman, Invisible Man, the Mummy. Of course, the creature back, the creature from Black Magoon is my all-time favorite. And I still think um, the Bride of Frankenstein is one of the best great sequels of all time. And just incredible how that film made was made, you know. Those films, you know, I think is just amazing. And one of the other films that made me love for it, I think it's Whatever Happened to Baby Jane with Joan Crawford and Betty Davis. That is a film because I know there was a rivalry between the two, but it definitely, they were able to still be professional about it. And that film, the way that film is very creepy and it's just phenomenal, incredible. And it's just spectacular and how great that horror film was. And of course, you know, films like the hammer films who but well the hammer films are definitely interesting films for sure they definitely have unique camera films because you know they're known for the, their side effect fiction fillers and there's some which were some more were called horror because i know the maniac and die die darling is definitely definitely interesting and i do love christopher lee's performance as dracula the hammer dracula films there's definitely just incredible bone crunching films those films are definitely there's not all the Hammer films, but there's some Hammer films that are just so, so, so incredible, well-written films, and it's just amazing. And of course, and of course, my next film I'm going to talk about what made me love for it. it made me love werewolf films. Is American Wolf, Werewolf in London? Werewolf London is definitely one of the all-time. I think my all-time favorite werewolf movie. You know, it's just I know. I know John Re- John Landis, but I do pretty sure what John Landis did for this film, and I know his reputation after this and stuff. But the Mary Worth of London is just a phenomenal film. You know, you know the the two friends are walking by themselves and they get brutally attacked by the wolf, and it definitely has one of my favorite transformation. I think it's still the best transformation screen for a werewolf scene. Oh, and you really feel the hurt when he's turning to the werewolf in the whole the whole third act. It's just, just, just bonkers. You know, the everyone's just is go all craziness. The car's flying. He's eating everybody. Everyone's running away. What scene? And of course, he gets killed. Dan Werewolf in London is definitely. I love the fact what it did, what it did for me and love for horror. And of course, and then, then my next film I'm going to talk about was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What uh, what a film that was! You know, Toby, Ho- Toby Hooper. You know, they showed they shot that on a small budget, and you know, they roll with it. And it was really like a grindhouse. I don't. It's not definitely not a slasher film. It's, it's just a grindhouse, slimy, um, just gritty film. And I love how it's the way it's shot. You know, they're, the, you know, in the middle of. Texas, you know, they're on the hitchhike. They pick up the hitchhiker. The hitchhiker slices his hand. They know what Ed and Neil did for that carriage is phenomenal. And then does that, you know, at the end. And of course, you know, to get Jim Seed out in here as the cook was just perfect. Look what your brother did to the door. And of course, he had to find something to get mad at Letterface. Left. You ruined the door. Um, of course, you know, when. When they walk, when walk to the house for his first time and Letterface comes out, nowhere hits. Over the hammer scene is just phenomenal, phenomenal. And then he shuts the door. What way? What the heck? He's like, oh okay, crap, they shouldn't have walked into that house. Because no one's around. And then Letterface just comes out nowhere and hits him over the head with a hammer. And of course, Sally, you feel fear for Sally when Sally's by herself, her brother's dead, everyone's dead, and they got her kidnapped and just torching her. And what a scene that was, and especially the, the camera shot. You see the family's this perspective. It's just an evening and oh my goodness is she gonna get out in the chat and then trying to get grabbed with the hitter of the head and she finally escapes and she's just running for her life and and uh and um and there's the hitchhiker and letter face chasing after and of course hitchhiker gets ran over of course but um i had that few moments in texas chainsaw the game and still do got two killers chasing you up the road <laughs> so um but no one texas chainsaw you know for what it did and of course the next film we're going to talk about is Alien. 
Alien, my gosh, what a masterpiece that is. You know, in the, in the middle of space, no one could hear you scream. And what's just so famous, and Scorsese Scor- Scor- Wheeler did a phenomenal job as Ripley. And Alien, you know, the way it was shot, and, you know, you know you, they take their time before they actually show you the alien. And when you see the alien, what an iconic scene. Like, oh, my goodness, that's what's been following them and killing them. And especially the alien coming out of the stomach scene, which they didn't tell the cast. They got their general reaction. It's so genius. They were... Stay away from me, you bitch. What a what a line that was, and 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 I love the art direction on it. What you know, Roger Christian did a phenomenal job as the art director. Um, and the way it, Ripley Scott definitely was on top of his game at that time. Um, and what wow, what a film that was! And I wish Jason X was shot that way. Can you imagine being shot that way? But even though I do have fun time with jason x it's just i wish you know can you imagine it a shot alien style would have been very very interesting to watch and you know and, and of course you know like you know films like the fog escape from new york you know um the fog you know john carpenter is the fog you know it, it, you know ever since then seeing the fog in real life is not this is definitely not the same way ever again after seeing the fog the fog you know with john carpenter things it's just of course john carpenter's the thing i love john carpenter's thing it's my all-time favorite carpenter film besides halloween and the fog and escaped for new york they live and and i think john carpenter's vampires is very underrated um but no the fog that's really you know adrian barbaro barrow's character um it's just spectacular. Of course, you got Stash Atkins in there, but <laughs> um, Jamie Lee Curtis's character, you know, she doesn't really do anything, but um, and then of course, you know, I love Hal Horbrook's character. Um, it's just amazing. Always wondering what because he comes out nowhere and touches on the show. I'm like, what is he doing in the corner? Um, but you know, um. Um, what a phenomenal ending! You know, you, you got Rob Bottin just dresses the ghost and slices him. I think his Carpenter always never has a good ending ever. So, um, yeah, and you know, you know, because because you know, these films, you know, horror films in general, it just, just. You know, I just love horror and what as horror has become since then. You know, and I appreciate what Wes Craven Scream did for the genre. Um, um, definitely is just this horror. I love the horror genre because I got many, many friends because of it. Amazing, amazing YouTubers that I'm friends with to this day because of horror. We got an amazing community because of it. And, and, and I'll, and I love horror because look at what's behind me. You can see horror right behind me. I know. And of course, you know, Dawn, I appreciate Night of the Living Dead because they made me love the zombie genre. Night of the Living Dead, Day of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, the original Dawn of the Dead. And of course, Snyder's remake, Dawn of the Dead, I think is just amazing because, you know, I do, I love the original Dawn of the Dead, how slow they are. But I also love the remake Dawn because it's scary when they come flying at you. I love both Dawn of the Dead for so many reasons. And, and of course, Evil Dead, you know, Evil Dead, the Evil Dead, how, you know, Sam Raimi and his brother, is Robert, and then brother, and of course, his friend Robert Tabbert, and of course, his friend Bruce Campbell, who's playing the title character. So it's Ash is basically Bruce being Bruce. And now they shot that on a little budget. And how creepy that was, and the makeup was just phenomenal. And they're how they're taunting Ash in those voices, and he has to kill everybody and get the chainsaw. And it's just very, very scary that one is. I, I love all the Evil Dead. I do love Army of Darkness, but I'm always, I've always been more on the serious dark side when it comes to the Evil Dead franchise. So, you know, the horse, what the horse genre has done for me, and I would love that I finally filmed the screenplay I wrote 10 years, well, not 10 years ago, it was 12 years ago, back in 2011. And I love to get, would love to continue my filmmaking. And I would love to do that. And it's just been, what the horror genre has done for me is just amazing ride. And to this day, I, and, and it's to this day, I think there's still young filmmakers do amazing job with the horror genre. I think the horror genre is still an amazing place right now. 
I still think there's some original ideas that you can still do. There's still some ideas I think that people still haven't done yet. I know people still, some people said there ain't, there is, it's just that no one's ever, has ever decided to do those ideas. I still have some million ideas where you can take horror and there's so many ways you can do it. So, all right, guys, let me know in the comments. What's the horror films that made you love horror? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to know. Abu will be back Thursday with another video. And of course, I think on the weekend, I'll be bringing on Mika. We'll be discussing our t our favorite horror films from each year of the 90s. That'll be a blast. And then, of course, sometime in October, I'll be interviewing Roger Christian because I'm still in working on the details with um, the OG director of um, Child's Play and Fright Night, Tom Holland. Um, I, and, of course... Still working on the details with Tom Lee Wallace, the Halloween 3 director, Friday Night Part 2 director, and of course, it means, of course, the creator of um, the Mars Mask. So that's very, very cool. With that being said, thanks for all watching. Hope you have an amazing, wonderful day. We'll see you later, everyone. Bye.